just take a little bit of turpentine, a little bit of the wax medium, or just turp or oil, just regular oil. Just a bit of umber. Let's get a little bit more of this flowing up and down. A little bit more of that umber in there. So we're going to draw with that. But this just kind of gets me to break that surface and just kind of abstractly just throw the material on the canvas so we start feeling at ease with our paintings. Okay, let's uh, kind of get a feel for this. Head will be up in about there. We'll put the hand about there. Hmm, let's see. Bring that hand just up a little bit. I don't want to get too greedy, but there's a lot of great things to paint there. <laughs> I have to think, you know, what can, what can we do? There's the knee, so there's, it's a triangle. Nice pyramid form, there's, that's the head. There's the hat. Arm, hand will be about right there like that. Mass arm, and into that mass I could just throw a stroke in to say there's an arm there. I'm going to slightly relax the body just by turning the ribcage that way and that way. There's the other knee. And it comes around, belt. Okay, I'm going to take some meteor umber and we'll use this to just draw around the outfit and the, the contour lines will do a lot of this that's work for me. Let's make sure that the overall size is correct. Shadow coming down. Roll to the face, cheekbone. There's a contour line again, going right, just defining this edge a little bit more carefully. Nose. The side is all shadow. We'll let that kind of melt right in. And Let's just cut under here. There, just gonna get a sense of that there are eyes in there somewhere. It's a mustache. And let's get a sense of the design of that hat. Also, even though it's round in a lot of areas, we will paint it with a lot of strong articulated angles. Come down, and then there, and there, and right way there. Get that strong silhouette, the cap, there. Okay. There's a little light on the ear, but it doesn't matter. So the shadow of the face, the dark hat, the dark cap, they all melt together. Uh, I will just throw in a quick suggestion of collar. And there's the other part of the collar coming back. Shoulder. A little tent, a few other people in the background. Uh, there doesn't have to be a wall in, in an art school. <laughs> it can be anything you want. Okay, now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to take a little of the diaxine. You can also use just black. I'm going to make it a little darker, and I'm going to draw with this too. So again, you can see I, use, I just use this as a good size number eight brush, but I'm going to use just the edge of it just to sharply render out and just put a little bit of blue in there so it doesn't get green so it doesn't get too overly purple. 
and again, just thinking black and white. one or two of these little straps down here. And we've got the big bag, satchel. I'm going to try to get the end of it. I'm shortening it just a little bit. Uh, now I can, I got a smaller brush that can maybe handle a few little touches for the corner of the mouth. And there, and I can paint the little butterfly shape that's under the lips. Just patterns, just straight patterns there. And there. Let's bring out that cheekbone a little bit more. So I take this, push that back. This, these big bulk strokes, which are you know fine in the beginning, they tend to now look a little heavy and aggressive. And so we'll take some of those out and go right into that black that I mixed. Gives me a little more control there. Black. There. And we'll put a shadow of that little like a buckle there. And shoulder, shoulder out. Take this brush. Okay, so that's our underpainting. This is a good way to start. So before we sort of launch into all the, and I have to also remove my brown from my palette too, before I, I don't want to get that brown into my color. So I'm going to leave the brown behind. When you see something, you usually want to paint it. You have to edit some of this down. Okay, so what are the important things? And we're going to try to make some good editorial decisions on the fly when we come back and, and work on this paint. See if we can spot and isolate different temperatures, specific colors, put them in there and make sure it doesn't look too out of, um, uh, um, out of uh, character or, or unusual uh, so it works inside the shadow. So that's the next thing. White and yellow and red with blue, which is crimson. And we'll put a little teal in there next to it and mix some of that color together and just a little extra medium so it flows because my paint is just a little sticky and stiff. Another way to do that is just orange and violet. A little extra red. See how that works. And I want it warmer so that can be used maybe for some, of the, some brighter lights but I'm going to mix up just more pigment in there. Throw in a little permanent rose in there and a touch of violet. It basically that's orange and violet that I mix. And work that around the nose. And the face here. Cheek. A little extra red. Just go in there. And we'll throw in a lower lip. Okay. And we can use also that for just touch for ooh, too bright. I'll give myself one chance to get it closer, and then that's it. <laughs> then whatever goes on the canvas stays there, there, and there. But this will work. Mix them there. Little blue. White. Let's get the right closer key. There, that's close. And there. Viridian and violet. A little orange. We'll use 
that, which will go here. On there. And we'll use it down here. And there. Okay, so I'm going to add a half ton transition here to get that to roll, another plane. And we'll add a little deeper half tone right in there. Maybe just grab a little of the beard middle tone and put that in. That helps roll the cheek. Could be redder, but that's fine. That will work. And I'll use a little bit also on the nose there. Okay, now let's go down, get another brush. We're going to go into a different territory and mix up the jacket. There, a little medium so it flows a little bit more. And this will just go everywhere. There's that blue. Come down the sleeve. There. Okay, I'm definitely going to have to add in the shadows here, even just with black, because now that brown is no longer functioning as a is a, uh, is a shadow here. Okay, and then the, it will go a little more purple for the hat because the hat's a little different. It could be the same, you could use the same color, they're close enough, but we use that there and there, blue, and we'll use that strap use it there. Okay, I'm going to put the pants down. There, across the knee. Shadow there. darker shadows later. Okay, this will help sharpen things up. There, see that just there, like this, this helps uh, give the, bring out that strap. What color did you just add? Uh, this is the black of dioxazine and, uh, and uh, crimson. And we can also have a little green in there too. And then as I work, I Look to see opportunities to move laterally. So we'll see where the cup is. Beard we'll use for the buckles. Green, red and green, yellow, and a little rose in there too. Take a middle gray. Right here. With a touch of the sky, which is right there right below the sun, which is the highlight. There. Shadow on that. Just add a little cast shadow here. So we might just turpentine and wash it like a watercolor. Just for a little fun. 
canteen. There. There. Dutch, Dutch. This is indulging. <laughs> But every once in a while I can put a few highlights, just a little highlight on the belt, a few subtle things on the outfit, just taking little bits of information and sinking them into this design, letting a lot of the, this stroke do, the, do a lot of the work for us here. field behind him. Okay, so we'll take a break now. When we get back, we'll work in this area. Kind of bring this up and then add a few little final touches. And so I'm just making these planes a little bit more complex. There on the tip of the nose, we'll add a little bit of just a tiny bit of uh, red on the other side. The cheek here. Just a, a little plain. Uh, I'll put just a little deeper half tone. I basically using colors I already mixed. You know, just pick them up. Put them down there. I'm gonna take some crimson and red. And we'll just drop that on the bottom of the tubercle there. Just little details like this are nice against you know when they're next to a lot of these bigger, heavier strokes. Uh, let's. Uh, Take the edge of our shadow, a little cooler. Now I'm going to go inside the shadow with a really warm reflection first because that's the most obvious of the shadows. Darker and warmer and even darker. Violet and crimson and a little red and right there even a little more violet so it gets a little darker. Basically, from that, we goes, it goes kind of an orange to more of a uh, warm violet to a cooler violet, even to some areas, greens. But I'll use this warmer violet first, especially where it hits the hair. Not that we want to get too fancy and fine, but I'm going to put a little green in there where it hits the hair right there. Green. Viridian. 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 Let's get that. There, and there, and then I'm going to go back to a slightly warmer tint, not hot, but it's more on the violet side, and use it to shape out the cheekbone. The downside of that cheekbone, I'm just removing a little bit, bring, makes it warmer, you know, just removing this, gives us a little bit of that orange, I'll do that here a bit. Just throw in a little touch of light. That's a nice little effect there. Just a touch of light on the, on the neck. Inside the ear, I'll just take a spot of red and just toss it in. Crimson, deep crimson. And I will shape out the cartilage of the ear. And there's a little light on the lobe now, so I think that won't be a bad thing to put in. Like that. So let's first put the reflection, warm. The paint is a little thinner down here, uh, up here, so I can control it. That is hitting the brow ridge, the glabella. That's off his nose? That's off the nose and the cheek, yeah. It's coming right here, right in there, and, and then, Strong, dark, and warm, where it hits the brim, and it shapes the brim of the cap. And I think I'm going to take that socket shadow and just kick it down right there to help show the drama of the nasal bone that comes down.
this one out. Okay, and then we'll take some teal and we'll drop that in right there for the cool portion of the face. Get some shadow in there. Okay, now we'll get up into the, that cap. And first, black, crimson, there, green. Show that anatomy of cap. Stronger crimson. Very deep in there. Still a little blue, but that's all right. You don't need to be perfect with that. And highlight. Highlight for the brim. Just subtract that. And then we'll put some red or Just take some black and I'll use that to kind of draw out on the shadow side. Give this a little more dimension. We can just spend a little bit more time with this smaller brush refining these shapes a little deeper. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this. This is almost there. Scrape away a little bit for the hair. 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 This gives it a bit of spark. I have to choose my areas. A little bit of orange in it. Catching the sun. Buttons down. <clears throat> Cast shadows on the buttons. A little bit there, and there, and there, and there. Just about, we'll just do a little bit more work here around this canteen. Throw in a couple of curves, a little deeper. That a little dimension, get a bit more reflection of the hand on the canteen. There. Let that melt away. Oops. Bring there a few of those finer lines. Highlight. the brown quickly for Just a little bit on the gun. Barrel. There's a highlight. So there's our Alla Prima. Uh, 
we got, you know, went a little bit beyond the face. Usually we do more in the face, but, you know, there was just all of this other stuff, which is so tantalizing. We could not resist painting it all. 